Hello friends and family and welcome to my channel. It's spring, April and uh, my uh, mother-in-law's tongue is blooming as every year. Uh, I was thinking about uh, sharing this as an, and as usual I do a little investigation online first and I found out that this is very 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 rare. And uh, I didn't know that because uh, this uh, plant is flowering for me every year. So uh, what you see is a very unique uh, flower. We're gonna look uh, closer on the flower and how it uh, is built up. But first a uh, little general care for the snake plants. The scientific name for mother-in-law's tongue is uh, Drasena trifasiata. Uh, it used to be uh, Sansevieria trifasiata. The botanists uh, changed it. I don't know why they do that, but it uh, happens sometimes. So I have a hard time to remember what's right. <laughs> anyway, you can find these plants almost everywhere and they are so, so, so tolerant. You can uh, overwater them, you can dry them out, you can uh, basically forget about them. And, uh, if you cannot care for a mother-in-law's tongue or a snake plant as it's uh, called sometimes, if you cannot care for it, uh, yeah, you shouldn't have plants at all, actually, honestly. <laughs> The only thing you shouldn't do to it is to put it in too much sun. They really hate it and they get really yellow and really really ugly. So uh, don't put it in direct sun. I have mine in a western facing uh, window and it gets uh, yeah, two or three hours uh, direct light per day and that's perfectly fine. So, uh, why is it so unusual to get it into bloom? Yeah, well, uh, when you buy a mother-in-law's tongue, it's uh, usually a small, like this, with a few leaves. That's a very, very young plant. This one is 15 years old. And most people maybe think that when they get this big, uh, they shade out uh, the incoming light to your house or maybe because uh, they, they cannot stand straight, maybe you just throw them away. But really, that's the uh, next step uh, to this. Just uh, keep on growing it and uh, when it's old enough, uh, you will have the possibility to put it into flower. So how to uh, get them into bloom then? I always look back at the biology of a plant to understand uh, how, they, uh, how and why they, they bloom. So this uh, species is an understory plant from a tropical uh, rainforest in Africa that has a very distinct dry and wet season. So all through the wet season it grows very shaded from big trees above. The dry season is uh, also a dormant season for most of the trees in this uh, uh, rainforest and they shed a lot of their leaves. And obviously when they shed their leaves, uh, the plant gets more and more sun. So that's why it blooms in, in spring. Actually, let me take you closer to show you the flower and you might understand why this uh, flower is so amazing. If you look uh, a little bit under the most open flowers, you will see that uh, very dewy thing that it's uh, putting out. Imagine a very, very dry season in a forest and the pollinators have uh, nothing to uh, eat. And the snake plant just uh, use the water it has uh, gathered uh, during the wet season and excretes it uh, to a very, very sweet and uh, smelly uh, dew that really, really attracts uh, pollinators. 
So uh, the strategy for survival for this plant is, uh, yeah, it's amazing. So I'm filming this uh, video in the middle of the night because uh, this is the time where it's uh, at the most open and uh, shows the most dew and uh, smells most. It's so sad I cannot uh, share with you the wonderful smell of this plant. It's uh, like a very strong, uh, sweet perfume mixed with uh, like uh, bubble gum, the, the fruity stuff. It's, uh, it's really overwhelming the smell. And it flowers from, uh, from below and to the top. And we have about six uh, flowers open now and it has been one day, two day, three day and we will get one more day of uh, flowers and then that's it. So four or five days approximately but you have that wonderful smell in uh, all your house and uh, that's well worth it uh, to grow just for that. I'm filming this in the middle of the night and uh, yeah, I feel I lost the track a little bit. <laughs> Let's go back to how to uh, get them into flower. You need a mature plant, 10-15 years old and uh, it needs to be grown very, very tight. As you can see, this is a huge plant in a very small container, and they really need to be crowded to put out the bloom. And uh, as I told you about the bio biology of the, the plant, it, uh, it needs to uh, be well watered uh, during our summer, which uh, simulates the, uh, the rainy season and uh, when autumn comes, uh, just uh, stop watering. It's, uh, I don't know, during this winter uh, I maybe have uh, watered it just a little bit, four or five times, but it really needs to have a, a distinct uh, dry season. And when the sun, sun comes back in spring, it flowers for me every year. So that's really amazing and the smell, you know, the smell is wonderful. So I'm gonna lift the pot up just to show you the, how tight it is. Can you see how it's buckling out the, the container? It's almost uh, like the pot is going to explode here. That is how tight it's planted. So yeah, sum up. Not that uh, unusual, not that hard, just as long as you do it the right way. Old plant, wet in the summer, dry in the winter. In spring it will bloom, I, will, I promise you. So yeah, try it. Uh, don't throw away your uh, mother-in-law's tongue because it's uh, getting too big. Uh, just find a good place in a uh, shaded window and, uh, and dream about future blooms. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.